Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with 10 cards from the Spellbinders June 2021 Wild Hello Card Kit of the Month. Now, if you stay tuned till the end, um, I'm actually going to show the process of how I put these together, how I lay them out, and so forth. All right, but that'll be at the end. So, your choice. But let's get started with the reveal. So, I'm loving the new package, loving the colors loving all the cute little images. I think it is absolutely adorable. Love their rebranding. All right, so as always, in your kit, you're going to get this card, which will list out your items that you will be receiving and some inspiration on the front and also a project on the back. Your card stocks are black, green, an orange, a yellow, pink, a light blue, a white, gold mirror, and a darker pink. These are great, bright, vibrant colors. You get your 10 envelopes and your 10 card bases, which are standard A2 size, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And these are side folding primarily, or you can make them tuck folding if you wanna make a land landscape card. Double-sided tape, double-sided foam, and you can use that whole block. As always, you get a six by six paper pad. Now remember, this is not card stock. This is not a heavy weight. This is, I'm gonna say about a 65 pound weight, um, and you get the full pad and I'll just flip through here with all of the beautiful designs um, that are in this collection. Again, I think these are great for layering and matting. One of the things that I do love about this kit, um, and if you've seen my videos before, you all know it, I love the collage. And for me, this weight of paper is perfect. Um, just to create all of those layers. I could have three, four, five layers of paper and we will be great. In this kit, you're going to get some journal cards. They are double-sided and you get two of each. And here I'm just gonna show you each of them um, and both sides of these cards. Now, these are great for your sentiments. These are great just to be a simple focal point. Um, these are great as always to collage with. So. Again, many opportunities when it comes to these cards um, and what you can do with them. You will also receive some puffy stickers. Again, these are bubbles, little tiny speech bubbles, um, making having some cute sayings. You also will get some chipboard stickers within this kit. And as always, a kit, everything coordinates. So you don't have to think, you can just have fun layering all of your pieces and combining all of your pieces, whether it's the cardstock to the die cuts, whether it's your die cuts to the puffy stickers or to the chipboard stickers, it's all going to match. So you don't have to stress over, does this color go with this? Kits are made, everything coordinates together. Here is your die set, some great sentiments for your stash, and the most adorable stance set with the animals and some great sentiments in that as well. So those are the contents of the kit. Let's get started making our cards. So I'm going to start out using one of the journal cards, and I'm going to uh, use one of the pattern papers as the backing. Now, I always, from the previous kits, I always have extra uh, double-sided tape and some foam squares. So I always pull those out first. Um, and that's the great, you get so much in this kit um, that you just, you really don't go through it. And I usually use the double-sided tape when it comes to my backgrounds, um, my bases to put them on my card bases. Um, so I'm using a lot and I still have leftover tape. So I think that's awesome. So I placed the journal card on top of a a uh, piece of pattern paper on top of another. Now, all of the base pieces of pattern paper that are going onto the card bases are cut four by five and a quarter. This way, I will have a slight white border going around each of my cards. So the card base itself creates a mat. I'm just gonna add a couple pieces of ephemera on this, um, just a couple of the tickets. And I'm actually going to put another sentiment on the inside. I found myself doing that to each of the cards. So we do something just a little bit on the inside of each of our cards as well this time. And that is card number one. 
All right, for our next card, I'm going to take a piece of the gold, mirror gold. And when it comes to specialty papers um, or something that I really like to hoard and hover, <laughs> come on, we all do it. <laughs> um, I'm starting to remember to cut out the center. This way, I have another panel of the gold mirror cardstock for another project, whether it's for a sentiment or an embellishment in the back. By creating that frame, I'm going to take uh, my next piece of pattern paper and I'm going to put that right on top of that mirror cardstock. So it's going to create a frame. And then you can see that green and white striped piece. That's going to be basically our mat going onto the card base. I'm going to add my double sided tape. and set that in place as well. Again, when it comes to pattern paper, let it do the work. Um, for me, that's the beauty of pattern paper. Um, the simple designs um, to the more intricate designs. Um, the pattern paper does what it needs to do. So adding a simple sentiment to that panel, you have a beautiful card. Um, and it's a great way to get a card done in no time when we forget. Yeah, that would be me. I'm going to take a few of these die cuts and put them on the inside of my card as well. So I'm just taking a, one of the gold hearts and the two party hats, and I am just placing them around that heart and I can write my note inside. So again, just a little bit of embellishing on the inside. For our next card, again, we're going to layer up some pattern paper. And again, your pattern paper, those with smaller details, smaller designs, whether it's lines or polka dots or anything like that, they can create a frame around another piece of pattern paper that has maybe a larger design. Now with the journal card that I chose, it's the black and white checkered. That's, it's really bold. It's really out there. So I did want to set that down to the bottom right hand corner so that you could still see the pattern paper behind that. And then I'm going to make sure that I layer items on top of that just to kind of push that back a little bit, but also help to push out the sentiment that I chose, which is sentiment, uh, which is celebrate. This is going to go onto the front of my card base. And then you can see I have one more die cut that's going to go on the inside of our card. Yeah, you know, I get a lot of questions, um, emails and messages, you know, why does it look like I'm flipping the card prior um, to putting my card base on. I am making sure the card is sitting the right way. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have put my panel on up on an upside down card base. We've all done it and it's awesome. And there is no reason to throw that card base away. It's, it's a great talking point. <laughs> and remember it's a handmade card. So it proves that fact. <laughs> For our next card, I'm using that journal card that looks like it's type. And I took another piece of pattern paper and put that across it so it looks like it's a pocket. I'm going to take that frame and I took that piece of part. Some of the die cuts um, are die cuts within themselves where you can take them apart. I'm going to take some of the double sided foam and I'm going to set that in the back, cut off the excess. And then I'm going to place that in the frame as well. So I took that whole die cut. I just broke it apart. And then I'm just going to raise up, create dimension on that center point where the frame is just going to sit in the background. So you get this little bit of shade going on there. Looking if I needed to add anything else. And I don't think that I needed to. So those tickets will just be set um, aside. Or no, did I put them on the inside? I don't know. Let's find out. So this is going to be a landscape card. So that becomes a top folding card. I'll flip this open and we're going to put another little strip of sentiment on the inside. Oh, 
immediately starting just to put our background right onto the card base. And then I took another piece of the pattern paper and just cut a strip um, just to fit on the inside towards the bottom. I liked those lines. Those lines actually matched the the die cut of balloon, bunch of balloons. So to me, it just looks like it was a continuation. I added one of the banner die cuts and I just cut off the bottom of those balloons so they weren't too high. And I'm going to add the other two. I'm going to add some dimension to these by putting a foam square in behind and a little bit of glue on the bottom coming out of that bottom piece of pattern paper as well. And I'm going to mirror that onto the other side just to make that since the die cuts are the exact same to make it look a little bit different. I'm just going to put it on an angle and I've cut it to be just a little bit shorter. I was thinking about adding a um, a flag, change my mind. I'm going to add the couple hearts down at the bottom and put the sentiment right across that as well. On the inside, I'm going to grab this other banner that's going to go across and that is where I will put the flag. And we changed to the pink one. <laughs> So it's going to be funny if you stay till the end and watch the process, you see how I change my mind by the time I get to do the video. Again, that's what we do. Have fun with it. Um, you know, just because we laid something out doesn't mean we have to stick with that. Go with how you're inspired. Go with your instincts and what you think looks great. Because honestly, everything looks great. So I've layered up some cardstock with or some pattern paper with the solid cardstock. And of course I grabbed the tags and I'm just going to layer some of them. And we're just going to create a collage of all of these. So one of the tags does have a sentiment and so does another one. Um, so we've already got, because of the die cuts, having some of those sentiments, we already have that created. So we don't have to add another one. I'm going to prop up these two tags at the bottom. And then we're going to add glue to the large one. And then we'll get those set in place. I'm going to add some of the puffy stickers because um, I didn't remember to put twine on top of the openings of the tags. So I figured, you know what, let's just put some speech bubbles over those holes just to give it even more dimension. I'm going to add double sided tape to the back so that I can get that placed down onto my card base. And for the inside, I'm just going to add one tag, chip up to the top just to add something a little extra on the inside. So again, grabbed one of those journaling cards and I'm going to fussy cut it. Uh, now this is not perfect because I am not a fan of fussy cutting, um, but I am a fan of just cutting around and having a big swoopy border. <laughs> so this was far enough away where I don't think I could do that much damage um, to my piece. So I just am going to cut out that sentiment of hello. Now I'm sure in the die pack there was a sentiment that said hello. Um, and if there was, then I have it for another card. <laughs> but I just wanted to take that. I like the color choices. Um, it's bright and it's bold. Um, and again, it's just another way to stretch out your items. Have a couple pieces of pattern paper. I cut a strip for one. And I'm taking this piece of gold mirror cardstock. And I'm just going to place that down just off the edge of the striped pattern paper. And then with the floral one, I'm just going to set that right over that gold mirror strip. So we've just got this dimension um, or this little bit of gold mirror cardstock coming out. I did not cut the center of that because I didn't want that pattern paper to dip down because it's on the front of the card 
Um, so I didn't want that wave if it happened. Um, I, I've never really had it happen, but just in case, at least then I have that border or that stability underneath it. I'm going to place the hello and I'm going to add some of the tropical images. I'm going to weave that through the hello just a little bit and then add a couple of the plants down in the corner coming off of that sentiment. I'm going to add just a few more leaves out of the back just to break up that sentiment from the floral background just a little bit. And we'll get this panel on top of our card base. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then just choosing an image for the inside of our card. For this card, we've got all of these plants in the background. So I took a piece of black cardstock and cut a strip. And I'm just going to trim that around um, this image. It's the best way, <clears throat> or it's a fast way, just to get a strip that will cover that cardstock there. And I grabbed the animals um, throughout the die cuts and also one of the chipboards. And I'm just going to arrange them around on this card. Now you could stop at three, but I wanted to go with five because again, it's an odd number. And the reason why I put that black strip there was to ground them, to, to just give them to say, hey, I'm standing on this um, instead of on top of the plants. So I'm gonna set the animals there. So the leopard's kind of floating because he's got a balloon that's lifting him up. I set the chameleon right down onto the black cardstock as if he's walking along. Same thing with the giraffe and the um, pink leopard and alligator. I'm going to use the speech bubbles, um, the puffy speech bubbles. So they're going to come out. So each of the animals are saying something. So I'm going to connect um, a bubble to each of them and then just making those choices there. So again, you're adding multiple sentiments or just some little tiny phrases onto the front of the card. Now there is one more animal that I did not use um, and that's okay. We're gonna put him on the inside. So getting this panel set onto our card base And then when we go into the inside, that's where he will go and he, adding a sentiment on the inside that says, have a wild day. And that is that card. All right, so here we're playing with the die. Um, so I took some black cardstock and I cut the happy birthday. So I loved the suns. Um, I thought they were really cute, and I love the paper with all of the numbers. So I thought between those two, you had this great combination for a birthday card. Um, and then it's great that the dies have these long strips, so you've got these two layer um, type sentiments. So just using that black strip along the separation of that cardstock um, creates a great two-tone looking effect for the sentiment that's on the top and the bottom. Quick um, and just a beautiful way to put a card together. Again, letting the pattern paper do the work and then just adding um, a general sentiment. So I was kind of on a roll with putting something on the inside, so I had to grab something. Um, so I grabbed this banner and just gonna put that in the corner. For this one, we are going to play with the stamp set. I know I a lot of times when I do this, I do a lot of collaging. It's what draws me to this kit. It's what I enjoy. And there's many people that ask, well, why didn't you use the stamp set? And that's, that's the nice way that they ask. So 
I actually, again, we are inspired by what we create. And this stamp set, yes, I was definitely inspired. So I hope for those of you that have asked um, prior are excited that I'm using the stamp set this time. So I chose the giraffe and I'm using my Simon Says Stamp Intense uh, black ink. I love this to use when I'm using my colored pencils because it's not thick and bold. Um, it's not a super dark black, at least the way that I stamp it, um, and I think it's just perfect. So I am going to show my coloring here. I have a pot, or I should say a bucket, um, of colored pencils that just sit off to the side, um, and I just grabbed a couple colors. So coloring in the giraffe, I'm starting out with uh, yellow, and then I'm going to come in with a darker, um, it's actually a brown shade, and I'm just going to cre start creating my shadows. So that yellow is that highlight. Um, usually when I work with colored pencils, I start with a light color base, um, and then I start coming in with my darker shades, gradually getting darker and darker, and then when I think I've reached that, then I come back and I go lighter and lighter on the highlights. Um, I put that light base down because colored pencils will blend with themselves um, and that's what they do. So by putting this color down, I can put that light pressure. I always start with light pressure. You don't want to start out with dark pressure or heavy pressure, I'm sorry, um, because you'll fill in the tooth. Now I am working on a piece of white cardstock. Um, there's really not much tooth to this. Um, I usually don't like to work on a general cardstock for colored pencils because I like a paper with a lot of tooth. I like using Bristol. I like using watercolor paper. And my favorite is the Strathmore Mixed Media. But as long as you use a light pressure and then continually get heavier with your pressure, you will get your blend of what you're looking for and you will be able to add your colors. Now, the color pencils that I'm using here, it's a match. They're like Crayolas, they're um, Sargent's, um, and Rose Art, which, again, I, to me, I love all colored pencils. Um, these have a nice hard core, so you can really get that pressure down um, and have fun with it. So that is our giraffe. Now I'm just going to add a base, again, to ground this image so that it's just not kind of floating in the air there. Um, I love the sentiment. Fierce, fun, fabulous. I think that is just awesome. And the look of the giraffe, I think, is great. Um, just turning her head just a little bit. So I'm just adding just a little bit of grass. Don't need to go across the whole piece. Um, just underneath her so that she's got a spot. We are actually going to make our own slimline. So what I've done is I've taken one of the card bases um, and I have trimmed it to be two and a half by five and a half. Yes, I'm crinking papers. I am sorry. Let me measure that again. So actually, oh, I'm sorry, actually two and three quarters by five and a half. So it's a mini, mini slim line. All right. This will fit in the envelopes that you get in the kit. All right. I've cut a piece of black cardstock to be two and three quarters by five and a half, and a piece of the gold mirror um, to be an eighth smaller. So two and five eighths by five and three eighths. Okay, and I'm covering, and I'm putting that on the background. Yes, I forgot to cut out that piece there. I was very upset as I was doing that, but I was on a roll. I took one of the pattern papers and it was just all of these, you know, phrases that was going across it. And I love those backgrounds. So I cut them into strips and then I just tore the one edge. For those of you that have seen my videos before, you know I love to collage and I love to tear paper. I just love the look. I love the look of torn paper. Um, I think it's organic and it's fun. So I'm taking a piece of the black cardstock again and I'm gluing these down um, matching up the edge, and I'm just going to cut, giving this a very small border on each side, and I'm using my long shears to make those cuts, and then I'm tearing the black cardstock. So I'm going to have two of these strips above and one strip below, but the grass is still showing, so yeah. <laughs> and then this way we have 
you know, more of those wonderful sentiments to lift somebody's spirits of, it's your day, love you, um, you're amazing, um, go you. So I thought they were just a lot of fun to add to that card. I'm going to glue these down and then I'm going to glue this panel down onto my mirror card stock. Now to do that, I am going to use the double-sided tape. I find gluing on mirror cardstock is awesomely fun because it just slip slides away. Um, and I always shift it right at that last minute before it dries. So using the double-sided tape just helps um, to give it an immediate stick. <laughs> and that is our mini, mini slimline. <laughs> I think it's great. You know, why can't we take our normal card bases and make them different sizes. Um, the more we go, the more sizes we come up with. So I think that's awesome. Going to glue this down onto our mini, mini slim line. And I think that is absolutely adorable. I think it's my favorite one too. So here are the cards that we made, the 10 cards featuring the Spellbinders um, Wild Hello June Card Kit of the month so as always we'll have those links down below so that you can check everything out now again if you want you know leave your comments down below i'll be repeating this again but by all means if you stick around you are going to see my process on how i come up with these cards now i'm going to start out where i just go directly onto the um talk directly into my camera and then I will do a voiceover and we'll go back to that. So I hope you enjoy. Hey everyone. Yep. This is at the end of the video. So I kind of put it at the end. If you wanted to see this, probably not everybody would like to see it. Probably P oh, there's a lot of people that don't like long videos. I don't know why they still watch them. You can see how long the video is, but anyway, so I put this at the end. I get a lot of questions on how I put these cards together for the Spellbinders kit. Yes, as you can see, and I also, I guess I frustrate people there too, I love the collage ability aspect for this kit. Um, with the die cuts, the ephemera elements, the stickers, all of that, I love to incorporate that. I just love to collage. So it's rare that I go into the die um, or the stamp. So, but as I said, okay, I digressed on there. So yeah, this is even gonna be a little bit Gabby. So what I'm gonna show you is how I develop all of the 10 cards. I've always, I've tried to explain it. People come back and say, you know what? That really sounds interesting because I'm literally just throwing pieces down. I lay everything out. So I'm going to get my grid here set up. Now you may not see all of them because again, my setup, I can't get this up any higher and, and all of that fun stuff. So that, that would just be way too long to explain. So you're going to see part of it. Okay. Um, so let's get started. I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see the first thing that I do is I take the six by six paper pad and I break it in half. Not literally, I just pull out the top layer of the pattern papers. And then what I do is I cut them all down, all of them, to four and a quarter by five and a half. Or excuse me, four by five and a quarter. Because nine out of 10, these are all, one of these is going to be my mat onto my card base. And I like to have this frame around the design area. So why not use your card base? You can use a piece of solid card stock if you want. And I do sometimes. Um, but for these, I've kind of gotten into the habit of allowing to have that white border going around because these colors are bright, they're cheery, they're rainbowish. To me, when I see rainbow or when I think of a rainbow, I think of bright colors. Not that I create a rainbow in bright colors, mind you, but I do. I think of that Roy G. Biv, that red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. 
um, saying that just sings in your head when you think about that. Now, before anyone asks, yes, I keep all the scraps. I, I keep all of these scraps of, of paper. Um, I use them for other things. I use them for sketches. I, I use them as bookmarks. So there are other uses that I do those in. And here we go. So I lay out the 10 cards and then I just start throwing. I'm literally just laying out the pattern paper and matching up the pattern paper to each other. So I'm flipping through. I fan them out in my hands and I'm like, okay, I want this one here. And I'm also careful on how I cut the pattern paper. Some of the designs you want it to be landscape. Some of the designs you want it to be portrait. Some of the designs they're forced that way. So you always want to take a look at what the paper is and decide, do I want this to be a landscape because then I got to cut that differently? Or do I want this to be a portrait because then I've got to cut it the other way? You can see I'm just going through and now I'm changing my mind. Now I'm flipping everything through. I'm saying, yes, I want this one here. Nope, that one I want to go here. This one needs to go back there. So here are the papers down. We've got those set. We've got those in place. Now, the next thing I do is I dig back into what the contents are. In this case, I'm going to go with the journal cards. And I'm just looking at them, looking at each one and seeing which one just catches my eye. What one stops me? What one gives me that time for a second look? And I pick a few of them out. Now here, and I've turned my camera, so sorry about that weird view. I take all of the die cuts and I sort them out and you get two of each one. I gather all of the tags together. I gather all the florals together. I gather all the sentiments together. And now we're just going to go through and now I throw out, not literally, but I throw across, okay, I want this sentiment with this. I want this die cut going with this. And this is how the collage starts. Again, remember it's a kit. Everything coordinates with everything. So the thought process of, does this match? You don't have to stress over that because it will. It's all going to match. That is the beauty of a kit. Everything you get will coordinate in some way, or you can make it coordinate in any way. Usually if I put florals down on one of these card bases, all the florals go down because I never know how many I'm going to use. You can see all of the tags. All of the tags are going to go down, except if they're really large. The smaller ones, no, or yes, the larger ones, I'll pick just one and set the other one aside. Here, all of the animals went together. And because all of the animals were together, wanted to look at, okay, maybe the camera. I knew I wanted the bubbles to come out of the animal's mouth. I'm looking here at the dye at the chipboard pieces now. Got my scissors ready. Oh my goodness, that looked dangerous. And now I'm going to cut out the image that I'm going to use. I keep all the pages together, but I'm just looking at, okay, you know what? I want this one, so I'm going to cut this one out. That's a tag, so that needs to go with the tags. Oh, that looks like a neat sentiment that would sit down with this piece. It's literally what's going through my mind. Gems, I don't worry about the gems, but if there's pieces, that's where they go. I've got two cards left, so that will be held for the die and the stamp. And that's how I create my cards. I hope you enjoyed. Okay, so yes, I flipped back and forth between what I refer to as live um, to a voiceover. So that is pretty much um, what I do when it comes to the Spellbinders card kit um, club membership. So again, I, I lay out my cards. I cut up my pieces of pattern paper. Again, I take half that deck. Now again, people are going to look at that. Oh, that's wasteful. We all have a different process um, and it's our own process. So, but that's what I do. Now they're both, they're all cut at four inches by five and a quarter. So I'll always have this white border that's going to go around the card panel. I can then, as I'm making these cards, when I get to the phase 
of pulling each of these sets up and laying them out before I turn my my camera on again is I'm looking okay what do I want this to cut and that's when I'll do that trimming so that when I start it back up now I'm starting to put the card together because I am doing 10 cards with this one kit and again it's what inspires me it's what hits me sometimes the stamp set and in this case it did I have an idea for that stamp set. It may not be what somebody else wanted to see, but again, I have an idea for it. So I'm inspired to do that. I'm inspired when it comes to these dyes um, and when it comes and mixing it in with the pattern paper. So again, it is a process and this is exactly how I do it. I lay everything out. I start out with the pattern paper. I then, if there's journal cards, they come out next. Then I go to the die cut images. Then I go, if there's embellishments, the stickers, whether they're the chipboards, the 3D, or the puffy, they come in next. Then I save the stamp and the dies for last. It could very well be that these images here, before I get to the stamps and the dies, I am inspired by all the collaging that I'm going to do. You can see I've also put in double the images. So when I grouped those together, again, everything's by twos in that die cut. So if all of most, the majority of the tags are here. Um, if they were smaller in size, I would have just piled all of them here. So all of the tags go here. Um, I put all of those puffy stickers here because I don't know which ones exactly I'm going to be using. I put all of the balloons and banners on this one. I split up the, the tickets um, and so forth. So again, when I'm laying those out a lot of times, especially when it comes to florals, tags, and the tickets, they all go together on one card when it comes to that layering. So I hope this answers your questions that I, and I do, I get that question every time when I post that video and it's multiple times, whether it's in the comments or I get emailed with it. Um, so this is my process. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. So what we'll go through next is I will show you each of the cards that we've created and the video will end. All right, and I hope you enjoy. Take care.